What's up guys, this is Puerto Rican Boy, and this is part one of Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy. And as you can see, I'm playing it off of the collection. So yeah, this is actually going to be a 100% playthrough, which means I'm going to be getting all the power cells. So yeah. Actually, I'm probably going to miss one power cell on the way, but I might make a separate video for it, who knows. And here we are, with Daxter dancing. Wait, I'm gonna set up the camera real quick. Uh, vertical's good. Alright. Not load. You know what's funny though? Is I did get 100% on this file. Because in order to get 100%, not only do you need to get all 101 power cells, but you also have to get 2000 precursor orbs. But the game does not save when you get all precursor orbs. So I do have the trophy. I do have my little platinum. But. Because I didn't save the game, I don't have 100%. But at least I have the platinum to prove it. I have it. spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and Nico. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Okay, 
Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. What in green tarnation do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you going to keep yapping, or are you going to help me out of this mess? I'm going to keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! Finally, gameplay! Jesus Christ. How long was that? Well, we can't get out. Uh, good. Said, let's explore. This is good old Geyser Rock. And you can see through the distance. There is also other places we'll be exploring soon. This device is a communicator. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time. Of course, because I'm a big klepto in games like these, I have to get that. Um, trying to see where the village is at because you can find the village in the distance these floating egg shaped things are precursor orbs collect enough of them and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange and of course this game needs a giant tutorial level to teach you how to play but it's not that bad i mean after you're done with the tutorial level they won't really baby you and like sly cooper which gives you Tutorials for a good the quarter of the game. You can find. But whatever. Now this is actually a pretty good approach to it. Just put in like this little practice level. Make it short and simple and it teaches players the controls and how the game works. And yeah. So it's not really that bad. <laughs> You know, Jack and Daxter was a game that wasn't too bad about giving tutorials, which is good because I don't like tutorials. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, shit. I think I got the wrong one. There's a certain... Uh, I'll show you. Oh, man. I'll explain later. This isn't it. Ah, come on. You see, Daxter does a different dance for every wow. power cell that you get. Like, there's like a... And depending on the order in which you get the scout flies, you can get Daxter to do a different dance. And it's very amusing. Of 
course, because I am a klepto, I am going to get these orbs. I'm not going for all orbs, I'm just going for all power cells. So, yeah. Yes, I know what Blue Eco is. I just used it. Ugh. Uh, Are you gonna let me play? Jesus. Okay, now I don't have to Klepto for Green Eco. Unless I get hit. by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. Now, one thing I should say is Jack 1 doesn't really have the best graphics. You can tell that it's early PS1 just by the character models. How blocky and Jack looks and all the other characters. I mean, the detail on Jack and Daxter, on um, the character models in the later game, definitely is better than this game. However, to be fair though, I will say that, you know, this game did have a lot, a lot brighter color palette in their levels. So there's a lot more brighter colors. And it's really nice to look at, whereas the other two games have a darker palette, a bit more of a grayish palette. I don't really want to say gray. Like, Jack 2 has the darkest palette, and Jack 3 is a bit of a mix between the two, but this game had the brightest color palette. Like, there's a lot of bright colors in the levels. It makes it really good to look at. But I will say that Jack 2 and 3 do have better graphics. And now we can finally get out of here and go to Green Sages. 